So, hey, y'all, what's up? Um, I, I just can't be great. Like, I just, I just can't, they won't let me be great here. <laughs> like, I, it's just, I don't understand. Like, my hair already won't let me be great because it's lopsided. Like, what, what's happening? Like, at least I washed it, though. Because <laughs> y'all know, sis been stuck in the bed the, for, for a week. That car accident definitely had, had me stuck. But today, I did you know, kind of go back to work um, and get back into my element. I did say, like, this this week and starting today going forward, I got to get back on my grind. And the reason being is, y'all know I'm a transparent person. It's just who I am. Um, and the car accident did two things for me. Well, I say three things. For one, it made me realize the value of life um, because I could have easily been severely injured. I could have died. I could have like there's so many things that could have happened. And I'm grateful that I'm still here, that I didn't have any severe injuries like that. That could have went so many different ways. And, you know, I'm still dealing with the anxiety of driving, not really so much driving as I am with being a passenger, but I'm still trying to get more into driving, being okay without, you know, just the anxiety of it. Um, I can't drive long distances because my arm, I drive in my left hand. So that started hurting after a while. I'm definitely not ready to go to the north side. The wreck happened on the north side. Definitely not ready to do that. Um, so I'm dealing with that. Uh, the mental is harder than the physical. Yes, the physical hurts, but eventually it goes away. Versus with the mental, that takes time. It takes time. So it taught me that. It also taught me, like, you need to sit down. You, you need to sit down. Like, you need to rest because you're doing too much. Like, you... You're doing too much at one time. And because I was just going, 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 going. Like, I didn't rest. I already don't get much sleep because I stay up late. I sleep late, but then it's like you're not resting because you're going to sleep at 3 in the morning and waking up at 12, 1 o'clock. That's not resting. So, I wasn't resting. Like, I was forced to sit down. Because it's like, okay, you don't want to sit down? God was like, oh, so you you don't want to listen. Oh, okay. I'm going to sit your ass down. Like, just just chill. <laughs> like, just chill. Because I took that week to... I didn't do any work. Um, I stayed in the bed the first couple days. And then I I rearranged the living room. Did my whole thing. And y'all going to see that whole journey later. And it'll make more sense. Painted a few things. But that was also for my mental health. Um... So I need, I need to sit down. <laughs> like I was doing way too much, trying to do too much. And the crazy part is I was doing too much, but I didn't have the energy to do anything. And the reason being is because I was depressed. Um, and the third thing it also taught me was Boy, I tell you, my memory is bad as hell. <laughs> I want to say it taught me. I want to say the feeling of it. Like, it made me realize some things. It made me realize how bad my depression was. Kind of, sort of. Um, I had been depressed for months. Like going back to like maybe august uh no i take that back i take that back it was minor back then but i felt it more after my birthday so my birthday was september 1st i felt it heavy like september and october and i you know i wasn't going to therapy because of financial reasons which had a lot to do with my depression because when i left my job and decided to become a full-time entrepreneur 
it's like I was grinding at first, like trying to figure out, okay, how can I make this work and still pay bills? Like, how can I make this work and still have money? And I came across like really financial struggles. And as y'all know, I, I went to Smoothie King. Like I tried to find a solution for that. And it's like, I can't, like, maybe it's not my time. Like I, I can't, I'm in a lot of debt. I got bills and unfortunately clients don't cover those bills. Not all of them. Some of them, yes, but again, not all of them. So I'm like, damn, like what was happening? <laughs> like I want to work in my purpose. I want to do this. I want to do that. And at first it was like, okay, full grind mode. But then it's like, I lost it somewhere along the way. And, you know, I was listening to people telling me, you know, I, I want to be like you, or I want to be, be able to take that leap of faith and be a full-time entrepreneur. And it made me, it, it kind of like helped me, but at the same time, it's like, it just, just, it's hard. <laughs> like it's hard out here for a pimp. Um, so I had to deal with that. I had to deal with a difficult relationship, relationship issues. I had to deal with just not having the passion to do what I wanted to do. Like, I didn't want to do nothing. <laughs> like, I didn't want to do nothing. I didn't want to do accounting. I didn't want to do tutoring. I didn't want to do book writing, publish. I didn't want to do nothing. I, TTM, I for damn sure didn't want to do nothing. Like, I just was, uh, mm -mm. that was like on the bottom of my list. I was not even, it's like I was forcing myself to participate. And as a president, you you can't really do that. Like, it's not a choice you can make. Grateful, gratefully and thankfully, I have a phenomenal vice president in Christian that can handle the duties of both vice president and president. So even though I wasn't really participating, at the same time, I wasn't worried because I knew she was going to handle the things that I needed to get to be done. And I also knew she would understand why I wasn't doing them because there was a time where I had a breakdown so bad, I had to step down as president and make her interim president because I couldn't handle it. I've been in the game five years. I've been doing that. I've been doing this five years. I built that organization from the ground up. So them first three years took me out, like literally took me out because I felt like I was doing everything by myself and that's hard like I didn't have the best team I didn't have as many mentors I didn't have like just it was so much because nonprofits are already hard to sustain but when you're doing it by yourself and you're doing everything by yourself it drains you like there is a there is a thing called president burnout like it's a thing president founder burnout is a thing so I definitely don't want to do nothing with TTM. Y'all know TTM is my baby. So when I notice TTM is starting to fall, then it's like, all right, no, nah, like you, you struggling. It's like you, you ain't, you need to get it right. And I finally went to therapy a couple weeks ago. I went back. I hadn't been to therapy since July and it's October. So I, and I was going like once a month, like faithfully once, twice a month. So to not even have that, and then I'm a person, again, I don't talk about my issues. Like, even though I'm transparent, I don't really talk to very many people about my issues, especially when it comes to my mental health. I talk to my cousin, probably, and I talk to Christian the most. But when it comes to my mental health, I don't really, because I have to deal with it on my own, so I can't really talk about it to other people. Um... And literally the only thing I had was YouTube because as y'all can see, them videos was consistent. And as sometimes I had to put on a mask in order to do the YouTube channel because it's like Vlogtober, I got to get this out. Like this is consistent for me. I got to make this happen. I set this goal for myself. I got to make this happen. So that was the one thing that I did keep up with because again, it's, a, it's therapeutic. So, you know, me doing reaction videos, I was legit laughing. Like, I was legit laughing. Like, that wasn't fake. Like, that shit was funny as fuck. Even my vlogs, like, everything I post on YouTube, the minute motivations, bro, they blowing up. 
<laughs> like they blowing up. And I love doing those because while I'm giving y'all that motivation, these are things that I'm going through. So I'm motivating myself at the same time. The reason I'm able to be a good motivator is because either for one, I've been there or I'm going through it. And so as I'm motivating other people, I'm also motivating myself because, and I, I want to say I stated this in a previous vlog, but people can motivate me, but it's just not the same. Like it, it's not, it's not really the same as if I'm doing it. Like, and it's not to put myself on a high pedestal. It's not to put my, like, saying I'm better than everybody. It's just that my method of motivating touches me. And I'm the one with that method. It's my method. Like, God gave me that talent to do it the way it should be done for me. So, it's my method. Like, I, I just, I was motivating myself at the same time. Because it's going to get on my nerves. Um, and again, y'all know I live in the ghetto, so I'm not even concerned about what's going outside right now. But I was dealing with depression, and it was bad. Like, I told my therapist, I didn't want to get out the bed. I didn't want to do nothing. Like, I just didn't have that, that fire that I used to have. And it's been like that for, I'll probably say, like, the last two years. And, because I used to be, when I, like, I created business, this, these businesses, I created the trouble movement. Like, when I tell y'all, I used to be fire, like, unstoppable. Because I've been, shut up. I'm sorry. <laughs> it pissing me off. I hate it. <laughs> and that's another thing that drives me crazy, because I hate it here. So, I call myself trying to read do the house thinking that it's like okay maybe it, it'll change the scenery maybe it'll change the vibe maybe it'll change the energy and it helps but at the same time i still don't want to be here and i'm not in the financial position to move um so that also made me depressed because i feel stuck i feel like super stuck and i don't like that so it's like i'm literally not myself and I, I'm getting better. I will say I am getting better, but I literally was not myself. I wasn't that ambitious, fire-driven, powerful woman that I was then. Like since I turned 22. I, like I literally, like, I don't I don't want to write no more. Like, I have a book that's that was supposed to come out three years ago. Like, my writing is, I can't do anything. Like, I caught myself, and I know it's, like, all over the place, but it's kind of hard because my mind is all over the place. But I caught myself thinking, like, can you even still write? Like, I can write for other people. I can edit. I can publish. I can do all this. But can you write for yourself? Like, do you still have that capability? And I was like, nah, I can't lose that. Like, I'm, I'm not going to lose that. So I was like, no, you're going to make a goal to have this book done. You're going to do what you got to do, and it's going to get done. Plus, Christian holding me accountable. <laughs> like, she is not playing. She holding me accountable. Then I got people like, when's the next book coming out? Like, I, I promise y'all, it's, it's going. It's popping. Um, My goal is to have it out by my 30th birthday, which is next year. And so, um, it was just a lot on me. And I didn't like it. Now, I granted... Because y'all know how big I am on faith. Granted, my faith never wavered. It never wavered. I did have worries because it's like, okay, how am I going to pay for this? How am I going to do this? I need to do this. I got to do that. Like, I did have worries. Like, what's going to happen? And I already have anxiety real bad. But so it's like, what's going to happen if I don't do this? Like, my mind was racing. But at the end of the day, I still never lost my faith because when I wake up in the morning in the middle of the day when i go to bed at night it's like i'm praying consistently i'm a the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much like i'm literally praying but at the same time also it got to a point where i was just saying lord help me because i don't i don't know what's wrong like only you know what's wrong only you know what the future holds so it was like take control which I've always been that way. Take control because I don't want to do this. <laughs> like it's it, you got to you got to lay your hands on it. Like when Jesus take the wheel was a real thing for me. And I still never wavered in my faith. I never have and I never will. 
never, never will. Like, I, I don't care what I'm going through. That faith is standing strong, period. I'm, I'm never going to lose that because my faith is what keeps me going. Even if I'm laying in the bed and I don't want to move, even if I'm doing stuff or trying to force myself to do stuff that I don't want to do because I have work to do. Like, my life depends on it. So you can't just quit when you want to. So I was, I, my faith doesn't, it doesn't waver. It don't matter what state or situation I'm in. At the end of the day, I still got faith because that's how I made all the decisions I ever made in my life as an adult. I did everything on faith. I do everything on faith. So it was, it, it's, it was very hard. It was, especially when you kind of, you feel like you're going through it by yourself. And even though my circle is, is so big. I have so much support. I made the decision not to say nothing. So I'm not saying like my circle, I'm telling you tight. Like they got me all the way. No questions asked, but it's like, I, you, you, you ain't going to understand. And there's no way for me to explain it to you to understand. Only thing I can tell you is I'm not myself. I'm going through situational depression and I call it situational depression because situational depression is a thing. I'm not, it ain't to the point where it's like, oh, I need medication. Like, because I've been depressed in my life to the point where I tried to commit suicide. I've been there. It's not that severe. I haven't been depressed since I was 16 years old. I've had my moments, but I have not been severely depressed since I was 16. Even when they tested me for it, I don't, I don't have it. So situational depression is a thing. And that's what I'm going through now. And it's like, when the car accident happened, because it's like things just kept happening. I'm talking about like piling on. Like when Smoothie King came into place, I was done for. I mean, so tired. I could barely move. That's why I had to leave. I was like, this, this, I can't do this. I can't do this and tutoring and accounting and writing and publishing and TTM. Like I cannot do this. And YouTube is too much on me. And I'm 30 years old. I ain't 16 no more. I can't stand on my feet that long. <laughs> like, I'm old, low-key. I can't even do that. I don't know, my arm got to hurt a little bit. But I was like, nah, son, that ain't going to work. So I left that. And it wasn't worth the money. It, it just wasn't. It's for me to kill myself like that, it wasn't worth the money. But, you know, thank you to Dave and Bill, uh, my adopted white father and uncle, for letting me go back to a store anyway. And helping, finding a way to help me in some sort of way. But it just wasn't for me. It just wasn't for me. I can't do that. Um, I have considered and possibly will go back to a corporate lifestyle. Um, I pro I have, you know, will possibly go back to Yes Prep or whatever the, the Lord give me. Because at this point, it's like, it's in God's hands. I don't know what's going to happen. And... I'm not finna try to figure it out. Like, I, I can't. I can't do that to myself. And I'm telling you, at the same time, again, as I motivate myself, I can't help but motivate other people. You have to realize that you can't control everything. We try to control everything, and we don't do nothing but hurt ourselves doing that. Like, you gotta have that mindset of, I can't do this. It's out of my control. Like, God has to control this. He has to lead the way. And I just need to listen to him and follow the path that he's trying to set for me. Because we we want to have control over our life, and it don't work like that. Because things are not going to go the way you want them to go. There's going to be barriers. Things are going to happen. It's going to be one thing on top of another. And that's what happened to me. It's like the car accident was like the icing on the cake. It's just one thing after another. Like now I got to focus on that. Luckily I got insurance. So that would have been an expensive bill. But now I got to deal with that. I got to deal with the stress of the insurance company. I got to deal with. It's just oh my God. It's too much. And it gets to a point where it's like oh my God. Make it stop. I can't. Okay. It's like I can't handle no more. I can't. I'm dealing with too much stuff right now. I can't do it. <laughs> like give me give me a break like just give me a little break and we had those moments where it's like 
we try to remember God won't put more on us than we can bear. But at the same time, it's like, bro, I can't bear no more. <laughs> like, can you, can you just ease, just ease off a little bit? But like I told Christian and like I tell a lot of people, it's something big coming out of this. It's it's a blessing coming because every storm that I ever went through, it, it birthed a blessing. No matter how big or small, it's a blessing coming. Like, I'm planning to eat a motivation with me live event. Like, it's a blessing coming. But in order to get to that blessing, you got to go through the storm. Like, you got to go through the storm. And that is what I stand on. And that is what I tell people. And that's what I've been telling myself. You have to get through this storm in order to get to where you want to be and where God wants you to be. It's just hard to think like that in the moment. So it's like the battle of two people. The battle of two mindsets. Because you have the depressive mindset. You have the negative mindset. You have the I just want to quit mindset. You have the I just want to give up mindset. But then on the other hand, you got the no. <laughs> like I'm not giving up. I'm trusting God. Like, it's not happening. I'm finna keep going through this. I'm finna get through this storm. Like, it's literally like the battle of two minds and two mindsets. And you know how they, they in movies or whatever, they have like two people talking on your shoulders or whatever. And one is negative, like you can't do this. And one is positive. Usually it's the devil and God. But you have these two things. It's like one part of me wants to go this way. One part of me wants to go that way. But at the end of the day, you got to go with God you gotta go the right way that he he's the only one that can lead you down the right path and that's what I had to keep telling myself and that's what I have to keep telling myself because I can't live like that I can't live like that I don't want to live like that and when I was talking to my therapist and she realized that I was going through situational depression because I was telling myself that and she kind of confirmed it. But then, you know, we're also with therapy. Okay, so what is the solution? How are we going to get out of this? And with my therapist, she's not going to give you the answer. She's going to help you make or help you make. I'm sorry. Help you create or understand the decision. I'm sorry. I'm fucking up my bad, y'all. <laughs> she's going to help you figure out what the root of the issue is. And that's why I push therapy so much. I I push it on a lot of people, not in an overbearing way, but in a way where it's like, I promise you it's going to help. You know, I do that with Rodney. Like, I, I strongly think he needs to go to therapy. He's, he's dealing with issues. You got to deal with the root of those issues. If you don't deal with the root of the issue or the root of the problem, you're going to forever be miserable. Like, you, you're not going to get to where you need to be unless you deal with the root of the issue and unless you figure out what the root of the issue is. And people got to understand you not going to figure that out on your own. You're not. Whether it's, you going to have God, you got to have God in all things. But therapy is, these people are trained for this. They're trained to ask the right questions. Now, granted, you, you got to find the one, the therapist that's for you. But they're there to help you figure out why am I the way I am? What is the root issue? And a lot of it is the past. A lot of it is not letting go of your past. Like, y'all see this hoodie? What this hoodie say? My past does not overshadow my growth. Because a lot of the things that are root issues and that we're dealing with is the past. And a lot of us can't let the past go. I'm grateful that I was able to let my past go. All the, the, the molestation, losing my dad, the depression, the suicide attempts, the being raped. the I was able to let all that go. For one, forgiveness is amazing. But I'm grateful that I was able to let all that go. And uh, I found out, again, a lot of the root of, root of my issues were family. I was able to work that out and rebuild those family relationships. Rebuild the relationship with my mother. So when you figure out the root of the issue, then you can start to reform yourself. You can start to grow. You can become a better you. But until you figure that out, it's not happening, Captain. 
<laughs> it's, it's not going to happen. But you can do it. Like, you literally can do it. You got this. You can do it. Whatever you set your mind to, you can make it happen if you set your mind to it. If you don't set your mind to it, it's not going to happen. And not only do you set your mind to it, but you stay dedicated into what you set your mind to. Don't waver from that. Like, if you have goals, I got vision boards all over the place. And I've been able to mark off so many things. If you have goals, you have to see yourself in that level of completion. So say, for instance, you have a goal to publish a book. I have a lot of clients that I tell them every time. The When you're going through stuff, the first thing that's going to that's gonna go on the back burner is that book. Don't let that happen. Because most of my clients is like, God told me I had to write this. God told me I had to do this. So, why are you not doing it? Don't put that on the back burner. If it's a goal and you feel like God told you to do it, then you need to do it. Don't put that to the side. For one, writing is therapeutic in itself. But don't, if you have a goal, stick to that goal. Now, you can take a pause. Temp God dog it. An amber alert popped up and just cut off my whole recording. But definitely going to clear some space because <laughs> I'm running out of space. But whatever that goal is, you said you can reach it. Like literally, you can reach. I promise you, you can reach it. But you have to set your mind to it, and you have to have faith that you're gonna get there. And faith without works is dead. So not only do you have to have faith that you're gonna get there, you got to put that work in. Because it ain't going to just appear. It ain't going to just happen. You can't just snap your fingers and it happen. It, no. So whatever that goal is, whatever your dream is, whatever you feel like your purpose is, follow that. Just make sure, for one, you seek wise counsel. For two, don't try to do it by yourself. You got to have somebody hold you accountable. With my clients, they already know I'm holding you accountable, sis. Or, or or bro, because I have male clients too. I'm holding you accountable. I will send them messages like, so you writing or no? Nah? Like, what are, you, what, what are we doing? Where are we at? <laughs> even with accounting, even with people with businesses, where are we at? Where is the growth of your company? What are you putting into it? Like, I'm going to hold you accountable. I hold everybody accountable. And if you know me, you know I'm going to hold you accountable. <laughs> like, it's happening. Why do you think I do many motivations? Like, that's me holding you accountable. And I don't know who's watching them that are personal. Like, I don't, I don't know your personal issue. But from the comments that I've seen, from the views that I've seen, I know it's helping you. And that right there, that's all I need. I don't care if I touch one person. That's one person I touched. That, that's all I need. I'm going for, I'm a forever be a motivator above all else. That is what I am. That is where my passion is. That is what my purpose is. Yes, I love TTM to death, death. I love my businesses to death. But at the end of the day, motivator is what I stand on. And like I said in the previous video, elements of me came about because there are different elements to Miranda. You got the good, black, the bad, the ugly, the anger, but you also have the motivator, the founder, the president, the author, the publisher. It's so many different elements of me. And that's why, that's what my YouTube is for. It's for me to display and talk to, talk to y'all about all the different elements of who Miranda Evans is. So, that was my transparent moment. And I'm going to do more of these, like, my vlog and my YouTube channel is everything to me. Like I said, it's the one thing that kept me going. Like Vlogtober made me realize how consistent I can be. It wasn't hard. It wasn't something that took a lot out of me. It's like when I cut that camera on, I was happy. <laughs> like, you know, trying to keep up with it. It got a little strenuous sometimes. But at the same time, I y'all got me messed up. Because again, I set that goal, I'm going to reach it. 
Like, I already started now. And, you know, thankfully, shout out to Natalie. She holds me accountable when it comes to my YouTube channel. So, it's like, because I made a poll and I was like, should I do Vlogtober or no? 100% yes. 100% yes. And so, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to do it. I'm doing it. And I'm doing Vlogmas too. Because that consistency is what kept me going. Because it's like, not only is this helping you. But it shows that you are able to do this on a consistent basis. Like, your YouTube channel is going to get where it needs to be. And in order to do that, you got to be consistent with it. Sometimes I run out of topics. Then God will give me one. Or I'll create one. Or I'll find something. So, again, them minimum motivations is popping. I'm going to keep giving them to y'all. I know I've been slacking. But y'all, again, right? life is just it's throwing them at me. It's throwing them at me. Them fireballs is coming. But again, I got to use God as an extinguisher. So, that is my transparent blog or one of them because it's going to be one of many because y'all know I keep it really and uncut. And uh, I like to pray for me. <laughs> like, pray for me, you know, pray for just mental health stability abundance like just, however you want to pray for me just go whatever whatever you feel on your heart then just do it even if it's just god help miranda i it, it don't need to be big that's why when i was saying god help me in jesus name amen that's all i needed a prayer doesn't have to be long it doesn't have to be a bunch of babbling like, it say that in the Bible. It doesn't have to be a lie. It could literally be, God help me in this situation. God give me strength in this situation. It could be small. It could be one sentence. Because at the end of the day, he knows what you're going through. He already know what you're going through. And he already know your future. It's, I, your, your life is written. You just, it's written. The book is written. You just got to flip through the pages. So, that is my transparent blog for that feel good to get that out <sighs> and as y'all can see i'm still smiling i'm still laughing like i'm still me like i'm definitely still me i just might have said back for a major comeback like girl girl i think that might be my minute motivation for today yep i'm feeling it i don't know when this vlog is gonna come out um, I don't. You just gonna see it when you see it, cause I be having multiple videos that come out like different times. But yeah, it's happening, and I never, I never say like, comment, and subscribe in the beginning. But y'all already know, like, comment, subscribe. I hope that helps. Um, that was my transparency, and like I said, it's gonna be more. So, I love y'all. And as I'm telling myself, I got this, you got this too. You just got to have faith. You got to pray. You got to set your goals. You got to reach them. You just got to keep pushing and get through that storm. Because I promise you, it's a rainbow on the other side. Baby, do you hear me? That's it. Cut it off. <laughs>